Okay, we've got an update on what it is that I'm going to do to uh, finish repairing this this impeller. All right, we're going to go ahead and turn it just like we plan to do. Get this weld turned down, and as I showed you, it's running out. I just called my application engineer Dave at Eutectic and talked to him about uh, doing these impellers, repairing these with the metallizing, you know, uh, thermal flame spray method like you've seen me do before and had a great conversation with Dave and he says that this is a very common repair doing these uh, seal rings like that. They've done a lot of them, a lot of them over the years. It's a very valid way to uh, repair this. So that's how we're gonna fix it. I'm gonna use my Teradyne thermal flame spray equipment. We'll get this undercut and we'll build it up with our powder just like you see me doing some shafts and we'll turn it back to size. That's gonna save a lot of time on uh, repairing this and it is it is a good repair. I'm gonna have people that's gonna be disagreeing with me and you're gonna read comments in this video about how this is a bad repair and I shouldn't have done this and I should have done this way, should have done it that way. Well, I believe in the application engineer Dave at Eutectic and he's got decades of experience in this stuff and believe me, I, I believe him when he says that they have done a lot of repairs like this and it is a good repair. As long as you do your, your build up, not your build up, but your prep correctly. So your undercut and you build it up correctly and you watch your heat that you put into it, it will work and it'll work good. So that's what we're going to do. So next step, we'll go ahead and get it turned and we'll get it undercut and then we'll get this thing set up so that we can do our thermal flame spray build up on it. Before I do any turning, I'm going to go ahead and measure the seal ring and then write the measurement down so I know what we need to finish it at once we do all of our uh, build-up repairs. Got a uh, 4 to 5 micrometer. All right, 220. I'm just going to measure it in a few places here just to kind of compare uh, readings. 220. That one's 221. We're just going to do an average. We'll we'll just shoot for uh, four inches, 220 thousandths. So we'll write that down. We'll get started on our turning. Let's see how strong she sings to us. Yeah, that ain't too bad. Looks like it's going to clean up nicely. All right, so there we can see our out of roundness. We're touching on the side opposite of the weld there. pretty good ways. So I think what I want to do from here now, since we're already touching the, uh, you know, the, the OD on this side, we're going to go ahead and install our uh, undercutting tool and go ahead and proceed with our undercut there for our uh, spray buildup. All right, there we have our buildup. And then opposite of that, we're touching on this side. I'm going to go ahead and give it a mic and see where this diameter is at. I think we can go ahead and bring it on down to match or at least bring it down to what we measured this diameter of the seal ring being. So 
right there it's at 2530, 123, so 233. So we can actually take another 13 thousandths off of this right here and that'll, that'll bring these two high spots down close to match this point right here. Pretty close, so that's gonna be pretty good. Let me just go ahead and mic it. I, I went ahead and just took 12. That's probably gonna leave it just a touch over. Yeah, we're at 222 right there. So with our undercut now, it'll definitely clean all this up and we'll have a nice round journal there once we finished it. We'll go ahead and get this face cleaned up some too. Just clean the, the most of the, uh, the weld area up anyway. So after making these uh, face cuts, I'm realizing that this area right here where it got bent was pushed in quite a bit. So this whole face right in here is considerably lower than the rest of it where it should be. So we're gonna take this back off. I'm gonna go back to the positioner and uh, very gently build up this edge right here with some more material using the TIG welder and then bring it back and finish facing that off. We'll probably make one little light skim cut across there because it's gonna you know move this diameter just a little bit but i'm just gonna do that off camera come back and and uh, face that out one more time okay we've got that edge built up there the face i mean how it looks now much better so just in case you wanted i don't remember if i meant or not i'm going to go through here later with the boring bar and just skin this cast id round where it you know it upset this material and pushed it in so we're going to clean this up give that a little cleanup cut i swapped the insert around because i chipped the corner of that insert there getting my threading tool set up for the undercut and what I've done is I had one of these corners on the uh, on the insert here that was chipped and rotated around so I've gone over to the Baldor carbide grinder on the diamond wheel and just ground a flat on the end of that to clean that chip area up and we're going to use this insert here or this point with the flat ground on it to do the undercut there. We're gonna go ahead and uh, put some masking compound on there now. This is what I use right here, Solution 103 from Eutectic. It is their masking compound. Just give it a good shake, make sure everything's mixed in there well. And we're gonna put some right in this area here, this uh, radius area of the impeller. I'm not really worried about it getting down in here because when I'm spraying, I'm not gonna be pointing it over here, getting down in there. What little bit gets up in here, I should be able to just blow it out and wipe it with a rag. We'll also go ahead and put a little bit right in here because as I'm spraying, some of that's going to try to shoot right over here and get right in that area. But overall, it should be uh, pretty simple to uh, just clean it up once the job is done. It's a brand new container, so I'm just getting just peeling the uh, seal off of it there. That should be pretty good there. We'll just let her continue to spin and dry. Not worried about the faces because that's going to be trimmed just slightly with the carbide tool once we finished all of our machining there. Okay, we're ready to start getting our undercut machined. Getting a zero set right there.
So I'm just going to get as close to that shoulder as I can with that tool. That's another another reason why I like using a uh, threading tool because you can get pretty close to a shoulder. Right there, I'm just going to back off. And we're going to make another cut on this. Not quite cleaned up anyway, so that was uh, ten thousandths. I'm going to take another ten thousandths. Get back in there to the start position. Go another ten. And that looks like that's going to clean up well. All right, let's see. Did that clean it up? Get that. Try not to touch your uh, undercut with your fingers. You don't want to get any oil oil on it that looks like that's gonna work right there so from here we need to do our our light thread pass on there and our undercut will be ready I'm going to be using my new aluminum hopper to uh, hold the powder there. Really nice deal. You got a lid that's got a uh, nice close o ring fit there on the cap. So, one of the tips I wanted to show you is um, have you a strainer and strain your powder. And this will help catch any kind of uh, lumps or, or clumpy bits down in, into the powder, okay? So we've got this funnel. I always keep this funnel just for the powder and uh, I always wipe it out and everything beforehand, just make sure there's nothing in there. So this is the powder I'm gonna use, the 21022. Just dump it over your strainer here. I really don't need all that much. I'm just gonna dump about half of it in here. All right. And you wanna find nothing in there, which I don't have anything in there, but if you had any kind of uh, lumps in there, it'll, it'll catch that, keep it from going down into your, uh, you know, into the hopper, because you don't want that going down through your, through your gun, so. That'll be plenty of powder right there. Take our module and uh, go ahead and tighten her up on there. Now we're ready to put that on the gun and get set up to do some spraying.